So yesterday I got most of the material removed in the general shape of the mallet. Today all I need to do is really just kind of fine tune that and take down these rough edges and I've got the general shape there. We also need to taper the hitting surface of the mallet similar to the, the wood is good mallet. You may have noticed I'm, I just hooked up uh, my dust collection using a clamp just to get some of the finer dust and it seems to work pretty good. creaking sound on the second uh, the second post here. I, I took it all apart yesterday and I kind of reamed out the hole. Um, and it seemed to help for a few minutes, but then the creaking is coming back. I don't know. I don't know if it's from settling of the frame or or maybe if the floor is a little bit unlevel. I just don't know what what's causing that. But I guess I'll take it apart again today and ream it out some more. I, I took the bearings down and they all seem fine. They all turn really smoothly and there's no um, play or wobble in the bearings. So it's got to be um, the axle rubbing against the wood. And actually the axle's getting really hot. This side's staying cool, but this side's getting warm. So I think that means that the, that the, that the uh, resistance is here and not here. So I don't know, that's just something I've run into over the last day or so. for that, but check this out. Now this is amazing. Watch this. Man, I should have reamed out that a long time ago. This is awesome. So let's see if we can get this mallet finished. Good mallet has a flat 
hitting surface. So I'm just trying to make sure the hitting surface here is flat. And I'm still, I've still got a hump in the middle right now, so I'm just working that down so that there's a straight uh, line between the lower hitting surface and the upper hitting surface. So that's getting really close. I just got a small hump right there. Probably not even a sixteenth uh, of an inch I need to take down right there and I'll have a, a really nice straight surface for the hitting surface. That's looking pretty close there. It's looking really good. So the edge of the wood is good mallet has a has a bevel on it, sort of a chamfer. So I'm gonna put that on the uh, upper edge of the mallet. The bottom side has got a pretty sharp uh, corner, so I think I'll leave a short sharp corner there. And then where we're gonna put the leather, I think I'm gonna inset it maybe just a sixteenth of an inch um, inside of the, uh, the edges of the hitting surface. And that, once we tie it down tight, it should keep it from, from, from sliding off. <laughs> see we've got the general shape of the mallet all finished. We've got a nice bevel on the upper edge there. So next I'm going to go ahead and sand it. Sand it nice and smooth. I'm going to start out by just using some 220 grit sandpaper and just try to get the surface nice and smooth. Then I'll come back with some finer paper. I just realized I was using my desk collector, but I didn't have my blast gate open, so it wasn't sucking at all. ready to uh, put the inset uh, for the leather and we can take it out and uh, finish it up. take my roughing gouge and connect these two small grooves and that'll give the leather an inset so that once it's uh, sewed tight to the mallet it won't it won't slide off. So I've seen where a lot of other turners use shavings to sort of sand and I guess burnish the wood. I don't know if it adds anything over the 
fine sandpaper, but I didn't think it would hurt anything, so we can do that with some of these uh, oak shavings. to explain how smooth and glassy almost the surface feels after the three or the two uh, grits of sandpaper and then using the oak shavings to smooth it as well I think we can take it out of the lathe and take a look at it and put some oil on it So take a look at that. It's not exactly the same size and shape, but it's pretty close. You can see the, the grip marks from the lathe. I think those give it character. We'll leave that. I'll probably need to sand down the ends just a little bit from where I couldn't get to it on the lathe. Let's put some oil on it to protect it and then the next time we will uh, put the leather around the uh, around the hitting surface and it'll be completely done. So I can't remember if I've showed you this mineral oil and beeswax combo that I made actually last year. I made it on uh, this was actually in 2017. I labeled it as uh, December the 1st, 2017. So anyways, this is just a, a, a mixture of mineral oil and beeswax. This is what I prefer to use on at least some of the smaller projects I do. Particularly anything that's food grade, like a cutting board, I use this. So I think we'll use that on the mallet and um, hopefully that'll protect it from, from checking because, um, you know, this is a a piece, this is a limb of a tree and, and you can actually see the center of the limb there and I'm, I'm hoping by keeping it oiled it won't form checks in it but uh, so far it hasn't so and I like using this because I can use I can just use my hands the uh, boiled linseed oil that I have is possibly toxic to your to your skin so I always use gloves for that I'd like to learn to make some boiled linseed oil that is toxin free. The surface of the wood has a nice glisten to it right now, but this time tomorrow, I bet the wood will have soaked up all that oil. So we'll probably have to reapply it several times. So I'm really happy with the way the mallet's turning out so far. And I'm super excited to get the lathe, to get that resistance out of the uh, flywheel. Now, it'll just spin without even me pushing on the, uh, on the, on the pedal. So the amount of work it takes to, to uh, power the lathe is significantly less. So that's really exciting. But So next time we will uh, apply the leather uh, to the hitting surface and then I got something to show you. Let me just show you real quick. I've got a new branding iron and we're going to use that to brand the the top of the mallet. So that should be really cool. So anyhow, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.
this.